Hey there, everyone, and welcome back to Virtual Crunchyroll Expo, and welcome to this very special edition of DKI Digital Era Entertainment's anime discussion podcast for your, well, not quite listening pleasure today, viewing pleasure. We are normally an audio-only broadcast. I am not only one of the hosts of this program, but also one of your hosts throughout v Virtual Crunchyroll Expo weekend, Mario Bueno. Uh, hey there, everyone. Welcome, welcome. So we have a very fun panel in store for you today. Uh, it is a very different set of circumstances for us in general, but we are very excited to be taking advantage of these circumstances to, to really give you something different than we normally do every Friday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But before we go on, I would like to let everybody else introduce themselves really briefly. Uh, we have a wonderful crew on our podcast and today's virtual panel. We're going to start over in Frongiville, in the municipality of Frangi Land, with the wonderful Frangi. How's it going? <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's going. So, um, you very clearly uh, do a lot of voiceover work. Yes, I'm in my booth. It has a lot more light than I'm used to. <laughs> I'm also wearing a lot more than I'm used to. I meant the jewelry, guys. You're not supposed to wear jewelry in the booth because it makes noise. Uh, anyway, yeah, hi. I'm just here to be an idiot. <laughs> Well, we, we always have ourselves a fun old time uh, on the audio only version. So it's going to be really fun uh, getting to do this uh, on video. So we are going to kick it down to our friends over in the Dallas Fort Worth area. We're going to start with uh, Emmy Lowe. Hey there, Emmy. How you doing? Yo. Uh, and Emmy, uh, also uh, another accomplished uh, voice actor. Uh, really appreciate uh, you not just being here every week, but also you know uh, contributing to this very exciting edition of Crunchyroll Expo. So thank you for that. Always happy to. Yay! Thanks for having me. <laughs> and also down in the DFW uh, is uh, one of our other members of our D team uh, and someone who is a regular fixture at a lot of uh, convention events. Uh, it's it's always great to have you here, Joel Gutman, aka Joel G, or just Joel. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty well. I'm really excited for this. Uh, I am not nearly as talented when it comes to voice as Emmy or Franji, but uh, hey, I do what I can to help out at cons. Uh, I've done that for the past eight years, and it's always a blast. Rock and roll, and it's it's really interesting that. Uh, you mention uh, cons as being one of the things that you've come back to because that is going to be the focus of today's special broadcast. Now, we normally talk about all sorts of different facets of anime on our weekly podcast. We've done uh, a three-parter on music. We did a two-parter on merchandise. We've talked about husbandos and waifus. We like to have a lot of fun on our show while also still talking about professional elements as well. So it's no surprise that being a part of Virtual Crunchyroll Expo, we decided this is an appropriate time for us to talk about one of the things that has literally brought us together and frankly helped digital era entertainment make it through the 17 years that we will be celebrating this weekend. So uh, that is conventions. So we've got a kind of two-part discussion for you. Uh, we're going to be starting by just kind of getting you guys and into the, the spirit of what conventions are like, because many of you are probably uh, just tuning into a convention for the first time. You may not have a local event that you get to go to, or you just haven't been able to go to your regular event. And I should also point out that this particular discussion is focused on how we do things here in the United States. Uh, obviously, a lot of you wonderful Crunchyroll fans are joining us from all across the world, and a lot of us on this podcast group uh, also have a lot of international friends who have told us stories about how you know certain things run elsewhere. So we're hoping that we're able to give you uh, kind of uh, our own perspective of what conventions are like for us here in the U.S. Uh, as, as kind of a cultural exchange, if you will. So uh, hopefully once we're all able to get together in person again, you'll be able to ex experience conventions uh, over here, and we'll hopefully be able to check out some of the international flavorings uh, that we are definitely well aware about. Uh, so let's start out with what's, what's basically probably one of the best ways I've ever heard uh, anime conventions described, especially from the staff end. 
anime conventions can be likened to a school festival arc. Especially for staff, there are those months of preparation, uh, the stress, the, the 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 drama, the tears, the balancing this passion with, uh, in the case of school festivals, homework with the rest of us IRL and jobs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I thought usually a, a lot of the attendees or the viewer in this case doesn't see it always happening on screen. Yeah, uh, so I thought that was a, a really cool way to kind of describe the the convention experience uh, from from um, an outside perspective. So I'm going to kick it over to you, Joel, because again, uh, you do a lot of work uh, in the convention circuit. So feel free to take it away. So school festival arc, how, how do we get to that uh, in terms of uh, our transitional experience into the experience of an anime con as a fan? Well, I suppose for a bit of context, um, I started off doing uh, staff support for uh, industry, actually. Um, I've done work for Crunchyroll, uh, Funimation, Viz Media, and some others as well. But I've also started doing convention work on the con side itself with uh, Anime Frontier and Acon here in Texas. And uh, obviously, they're both very different facets. But uh, for convention prep and honestly, any sort of live production prep, whether it be a theater production or a school festival. It's just the organization and logistics and the planning that it really takes so much time and effort on such a large scale with so many people. It's never just an individual effort. It always is a team that's putting everything in to create this final uh, experience really for the attendee. And uh, it just it reminds me so much of school festival arcs that uh, one of my personal favorites of all time is uh, Harvey Suzumiya is just uh, the band performance. And it might be a bit of a cop out because it is a classic, but I think it's a classic with good reason. Yeah, and and there are definitely uh, many portrayals of the uh, of the school festival uh, because it is you know really one of those touchstones, uh, not just uh, in terms of the the Japanese academic life, but it also makes for such a good uh, narrative uh, device uh, in a lot of these uh, high school oriented anime. Uh, certainly, one of the ones that I'm going to be coming back to uh, a few times in one of our upcoming points. Uh, it also has school festival elements as part of its backstory. So, yeah. Uh, also, we should definitely take this moment to thank the good folks over at Crunchyroll for putting on virtual Crunchyroll Expo. Uh, I mean, putting on yeah. an entire convention is already a, a very uh, difficult endeavor, but they have really gone above and beyond to really try and, you know, bridge the gap between the traditional IRL experience and the virtual experience that we've been uh, getting accustomed to. So thanks so much to Crunchyroll for that. Thank you. I hope you're all able to get some good and well-earned rest after all this, because it, it can't have been easy to have changed what was already going to be just a, a monumental task of putting on a normal large convention, but then also having to, with only, you know, a couple months notice, shift everything to be virtual. Just to, I can't imagine the amount of uh, testing and planning that really had to be turned on its head to make all of this work. So, uh, it is a very exciting thing to see come to fruition. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that uh, Crunchyroll Expo has become known for uh, in, in the uh, years that's been uh, existing, really, uh, is bringing its attendees into a literal other world. Uh, in recent times, uh, New Crunchy City has been one of the more exciting things, which is why I find it very appropriate that in, in our show notes, <laughs> then, that we talk about how for attendees... Uh, cons can basically be an isekai, and in the case of, you know, the, the, the standard uh, Crunchyroll Expo experience, this is a, a very literal thing. You are literally walking into a whole other world, and they're, they're definitely um, finding ways to bring that into virtual Crunchyroll Expo. So if you haven't had a chance to really explore what's available uh, throughout virtual Crunchyroll Expo, please do, because they've they've really taken the time to try and still bring you into the other world that is New Crunchy City. Um, so for myself, uh, I personally have always likened uh, anime conventions to uh, a comic party, which is a, a very direct reference to one of my, my favorites, uh, I guess you could say slice of life, uh, animes that is part of what I consider to be the otaku triumvirate of what it's like to be an anime fan in three different stages, and that is the titular comic party anime uh, from the, the turn of the century. Uh, 
the first series in particular, I, I like to go back to because the series starts out with uh, a person who is literally a first timer to conventions being essentially dragged into this world by his overly enthusiastic best friend who knows that he's an, an artist uh, and who's basically trying to convince him to start his own uh, doujinshi circle. Uh, and this this sense of wonder that they are able to portray, uh, there are obviously some very uh, distinctively uh, comic het overtones to the conventions that they show off in Comic Party, but the sense of, of wonderment and so many of the elements you do find uh, at conventions, not just here in the United States, but, but globally, uh, are really well represented. It really does feel like you're seeing this uh, through the eyes of a person who is seeing it for the first time. And I, I adore that. Uh, and I like, to bring, uh, I like to bring that in when I'm talking about, okay, what's an anime that really shows you what it's like to be a new anime fan? That first arc of Comic Party bar none. Uh, so it really does feel like, uh, you know, going into a different world. Uh, for the rest of you guys, are there any shows uh, or personal experiences that you'd like to share that, that also kind of capture this sense of wonderment that you probably felt when you started going to your first anime conventions? No, I mean, I think an isekai kind of nails it. And also I feel weird now because I feel like uh, Comic Party does nail it with having a friend that drags you into the world usually. But I never had that. And I'm like sitting here going, I must be weird. I had so much weeb built up that well, needed to go already. somewhere and I had nobody to take me. So I went, I'm going to go to Anime Boston 2006. And I was by myself, but I did it. Anyway, all right. But he, yes. here's the thing, Ronji. What? Have you been that other friend? Oh, God. Many yeah. times, I'm sure. Guilty, guilty. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I get some cred back for that? Okay. All right. I mean, to be fair, yeah. you never you're, lost you're, it. You're so, <laughs> uh, Emmy, what about you? Uh, any, any anime that uh, also kind of captured that vibe for you or any personal memories from your first experiences going to anime conventions? Does it count as anime if it's like the Fate Grand Order summer event? Oh my god, yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I guess for that, like, it, it's the person's first doujinshi that they ever made. And then, like, you know, as they keep reliving the time loop and working on the doujinshi, they just get, like, more pumped up to, like, make a better one and stuff like that. And you just see, like, all the different types of fans come every time the event happens and to buy the doujin and it's just yeah it, it's special yeah you've been sending us uh, screenshots of the that fgo event and we've all been you know just identifying with it on a spiritual level yep it's yeah for real amazing. <laughs> and there's even even like the arrow g got arrow gg guy who like finger guns all the time <laughs> for all the doujins <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it, it is a very amusingly accurate uh, portrayal. Even like the the bits you sent, where you know they're just going to the con for the day. It's like I, I was having flashbacks to every time I've I've gone to you know some of my favorite shows in Los Angeles. Uh, that that time spent at LAX, just waiting for the shuttle to go over to downtown LA. It's like, oh boy, I can't wait to get to the con. Yay! It, it really captured those moments Or as like well. they'll work up until like the the morning of the con. Yeah. Uh, and, and funny enough, uh, some of the things that I was thinking of, including Comic Party, do also uh, showcase, you know, the, the con crunch, <laughs> as, as we all know. <laughs> uh, and you can apply that to, you know, whether it's uh, artwork uh, or cosplay. Um there's yeah there it's definitely a relatable <laughs> piece of con culture for sure uh joel what about you uh, any any particular uh anime examples or uh, irl uh flashbacks that you're having uh well i guess just for me personally i i was one of the people that was uh dragged to a con for my first one and it was just i i remember having that moment of holy cow like what have i stepped into and like it, near the end of the weekend, like I found myself almost getting choked up at the fact of like, wait, I have to leave this now. W wait, why? But um, post con depression, it's a rule. Yeah, I, I was just thinking of the post con blues. Yeah, you you called it, Franji. You called it. I don't get post con blues as much as like Sunday morning blues of just I okay uh, little Doctor Who. I don't want to go. 
No, it hits you early. That's so sad. I don't want to go. No, why'd you say that? It won't even let you enjoy the last day. Well, no, because that just inspires me to go out of my way to really just, you know, uh, squeeze every bit of enjoyment I can out of those last couple of hours. See, on the other hand, on the last day for me, I'm like, I don't want a human anymore. Cosplay plans on the last day? What are those? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just love those bags under your eyes. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Before we get too off the topic, but th this is the type of banner for anyone watching that uh, we get into on the regular. But um, I guess uh, for me, just... Uh, seeing uh, somebody go in and uh, just sort of have that moment is always something cool, whether it be in real life or in anime. That's true. I did cry at my first con. Really? For good reasons. Yes, because I was at a panel for Jam Project, and then I was called on to ask, to talk to Okuima Sami and ask her a question, and I burst into tears. Oh. <laughs> yeah, and and. Yeah, you know, she's she's one of your favorite uh, Japanese artists, so yeah, this makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and those, you know, those are the the kinds of things that really make uh, you know convention experiences so fun, so personal. Um, and which then is... I blew up the toaster in our hotel room that Sunday. <laughs> like I said, <laughs> these are the kinds of stories that make anime conventions. And so... <laughs> I was cosplaying Persona Three that weekend, so I did burn my bread. Ah. Very accurate. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's, it's interesting because the next thing we wanted to kind of cover uh, in, in this particular block of our panel uh, is the fact that, okay, we're talking about all these fun little moments, especially for first timers, uh, that you're able to experience uh, at your uh, typical real life convention experience. We can't really do that right now, obviously. But there are ways that you can still find these these connections, these ways to kind of bring a lot of that experience to your home. And we definitely wanted to go over that with all of you. Uh, by virtue of the fact that you are joining us here at Virtual Crunchyroll Expo, you, you clearly want to enjoy the convention experience. And we are very grateful for that, obviously. Uh, so there are probably some ways you may or may not have thought of. So this is the Dekai uh, special con guide for virtual conventions. Um, I'm going to kick this one over to Joel to uh, start this off. So Joel, what's one of the first things that we can do to really kind of overcome this hurdle of wanting to have the con experience when you can't actually be at the con? Well, in general, uh, one of the things that Crunchyroll is doing super, super well this weekend is obviously all this panel content, all these things to watch, and that's awesome. Uh, and I think what people can do on their own to really just sort of add that extra layer is to think of all the things that you do outside of the panels and figure out ways to recreate that. An easy way is just to voice chat with friends between panels or even during panels that uh, you know, uh, you're always whispering to people during the different uh, discussions and uh, planning, all right, what do we want to watch next? And just being able to experience these things together, even if it's remotely, that uh, to still go out of your way and make sure that you have that type of connection with your friends during the weekend that you would if you were in person. Yep, pretty comprehensive, what I'd say. <laughs> I was trying so hard not to call it out. I was trying so hard. I'm just like, let's see how long we could go before one of us calls this out. I just, was... my, um, my sister-in-law made me the little figurines, the Zodiac figurines from Fruits Basket. Ooh. And I just was wondering if I could put them where you could see. So I took out, I took out Momiji. Aww. I just see a white blob. Yeah. Oh, it's a cute okay. white blob. <laughs> but anyway, and here's Kyo, so I was just ca ca carry on. <laughs> <laughs> Again, these are these are the kinds of things that we're still able to to do and enjoy, uh, you know, even uh, virtually. So, you know, what would normally be random uh, panel banter, we're still able to find creative ways to to make that work. Case in point, our our, our fun little decorating exercise while live. I gotta I love, keep you people entertained this. somehow. Oh, bless you, Franchi. Joel wasn't watching the screen while he was talking, huh? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, so uh, speaking of panels, uh, that is another thing we have highlighted here. You know, always go and, you know, pick some panels to watch together. You know, chat during them. There are chat mechanisms uh, throughout uh, the, the course of the weekend. But if you're, you know, just in a separate chat group, like a, a Discord group with uh, your close friends or some, some folks who you met through a Discord server or what have you, uh, you know, definitely find ways to, to make that work for you. Uh, find ways to, to interact. Um, like, we, we are lucky to be living in a time where it is very easy to keep your stream window open while also having a video chat uh, with some of your favorite people in the world. Also, hi, guys. I was totally talking about you three. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, so, sidebar, and I didn't get to this in our intro. Like, this is literally the first time I have physically seen uh, any of my my fellow hosts uh, for this podcast, like even since we started doing this, because uh, we've just been audio of only an audio podcast. Yeah. So it's it's genuinely like a really fun thing for me to be here, you know, talking to them and getting to see everybody and interact that way. So it's it's these little touches, these little nuances that I think will really you know, take take the virtual experience to the next level. So if this is, you know, something you want to do with friends or family, <clears throat> definitely get creative with it. There There is plenty of tech <laughs> that makes it possible. So something to, to think about there. And um, another point that was brought up here, uh, doing virtual room parties with friends. Uh, I would like to go around the room and just uh, take, take your thoughts on that. So like, how would you treat that uh, if, if you guys were doing like a virtual room party? Uh, any anything you would want to bring from the IRL experience, uh, or or would you just want to try and do like a very different interpretation of the traditional room party? I mean, I haven't had a virtual room party, but I know that Fanime, which did not go online, I believe, um, that very weekend, a lot of my West Coast fans, I mean friends, who are very big on you know partying, mm -hmm. they had a virtual Fanime room party. <laughs> Wow. Nice. <laughs> so, you know, all the drinks, all the usual stuff, they were like, party starts in this hotel room at this time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh my you God. If you have a Discord server and you make different channels for each of the different hotels near the convention center, yeah, yeah. you actually go to all the different hotels throughout the course of the night. I mean, for all I know, they probably did that. They party <laughs> hard, man. Hyatt, room 1618. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to the Hyatt, guys. I'll, I'll be right back. Click. <laughs> that's actually really creative. Uh, and that's that's a pretty cool one. <laughs> I just find it hilarious that they did the room party, but not the con. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you have to, again, you have to be a little bit creative sometimes. Uh, and that is a great way to do it. Um, I, I really like that idea. Like just, just set up, you know, hotel plus, uh, plus like a room number to give it that, that authentic feeling, like have other people run like different, uh, different rooms in the server or, you know, make different servers based on the hotel. That's, that's pretty cool. On the center hallway, if you want to be hanging out, you know, between panels. That, that would be where you go at like 3 a.m. to like yeah, 6 a.m. Yeah, not in the middle of the hallway or you'll be chased out. So, <laughs> you know, congested traffic, six feet apart. Could you imagine how horrible it would be if someone set up like a mod bot to, to basically patrol that particular thread between the hours of like 3 to 6 a.m.? Like that would be, first off, that would be super authentic, but also, wow, that would be so mean. <laughs> we, I'd love we, to we see that. On, but now I just want to panel on how to create a, you know, a, a virtual con on a server and all the different nuances there. But we, we have a lot of other stuff to talk about. Exactly. So moving on, and you know, we we're, were talking about, you know, meeting people. There are various ways to do that, both uh, IRL and online. But we're going back to the IRL experience. Um, so we've talked about, you know, what it's like for, for you know, the first timer, especially like you're just kind of uh, o overwhelmed by all this cool stuff, all these interesting looking people. Um, so we're, we're going to talk about some of the people that, you know, we we feel, uh, especially if you've never been to a convention before, that you should kind of be on the lookout to to get yourself acquainted with. Um, I'm going to turn this one over to Franji first. So, uh, Franji, uh, our first point uh, over here, uh, tell us a little bit about this group of people that uh, we feel is like one of the first groups you should definitely look to meet if you're going to specifically a fan event. I guess I should totally look at the show notes, which I'm totally not doing at the moment. 
nerds like me. So I, I go towards the people who are fangirling about what I'm fangirling about. And then it usually just takes off from there. Um, what do the show notes actually say? I can totally talk about that. Where are we? Uh, people well, who they're, inspire they're you. Learning, but but like, like you said, that uh, people with shared interests, that that's definitely one of the easiest ways that uh, whether it be, you know, in the registration line or while you're waiting for a panel to start or just in the hallway, if you see someone in a particular cosplay that I did, don't be afraid to strike up conversation with people that uh, obviously, you know, don't invade personal space or anything. And if someone looks like they're in a rush, don't bug them. But uh, you never know who you can meet. And just uh, everyone who is at a convention intrinsically has at least a tangential common interest with you. So yes. you, you always have that basis to start with. Yeah. Uh, and, and especially if you're in the, uh, the, the cosplay scene, uh, one of the things I've always said uh, that, that, I loved so much about it. Uh, you can literally wear your fandom on your sleeve, and that can lead to so many interesting conversations. Uh, it's one of the reasons why you know Hime's cosplay cup is going to be such a blast. Uh, it they've they've been a very uh, tight knit community on a Discord channel uh, leading up to the show. So you're seeing people making connections because of this shared fandom. In this case, through cosplay. Um, I know that you know uh, I've met. Uh, Emmy and some of uh, some of our other mutual friends for through love of of uh, particular shows that we've expressed through cosplay. Yep. <laughs> yes. And I, now looking at the show notes, I'm like, oh, I know what he wants me to talk about. Now I get it. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, I met Mario and ended up talking to Mario quite a bit because of uh, nerding out for Code Geass. <laughs> so there's that things like that. You just kind of gravitate toward what you're Macross enthusiastic over about. Here. Macross. Yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, literally one of the first times we, we ever like spoke, we were uh, cosplaying with uh, other folks as like the opposite characters, you know, um, Alto, uh, Alto and Cheryl. <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was just like destiny. <laughs> Friendos. Um, and, and the another... non Gundam C variety. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another. Like, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Oh, no, I was just saying that, like, a way that I made most of a lot of my friends besides cosplay for um, at cons is for co musical acts. Like, I remember, um, like, when Jam Project was at Anime Boston one year and we started waiting hours and hours and hours ahead of time. And you know that those people that are up at the front with you waiting for hours and hours and hours at a time are huge fans just like you are. Yep. So you already have something in common right there. And you have a lot of time to spend together. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, line conversations are frankly one of the, the best times because uh, you're not going anywhere and you are clearly passionate about whatever you are waiting in that line for. So that's... Uh, always been one of my my favorite things to encourage someone who's never been to a convention to really you know kind of look forward to believe it or not I mean let's face it waiting in a line sucks but waiting in a line at a fan event when you're surrounded by people who have that same dedication that same passion oh you can have a field day with that so that's a great time it's to the best lines you're ever going to be in yeah yes raise your hand if you There's miss also... being on a line right now oh god. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's There's fair, Emmy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, and, and another group of people, and this this kind of also helps us uh, really look to the next part of our discussion. People who inspire you. Uh, obviously, one of the great things about fan events, uh, especially ones like uh, Virtual Crunchyroll Expo, where they're bringing in you know renowned guests from multiple industries. These are people who, who inspire others to take up crafts or are just a very uh, key piece of their lives because of what they contribute to uh, various works or, or as artists themselves. So uh, oh, don't be afraid to, you know, uh, wait in a line to, to meet your, your favorite uh, inspiration. That's one of the best things about the, the convention experience. You have that ability to do that. So definitely take advantage of that if you have the chance. Uh, do you guys have anyone that you can think of off the top of your heads that, you know, you, you went out of your way at an event to, to meet because of what they meant in your lives? Oh, Queen Masami. Uh, oh. Reika, I guess, at Sabaton Khan. Ooh. Yeah, that was a few years ago, but that was, yeah, I usually don't go to panels and stuff like that, but I did, and I was a nerd. Yeah, uh, I do not get starstruck very often but i remember uh 
when I had the chance to see Nobuo Uematsu at Magfest, that that was mm. one that it, that that was a, a really special day. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. For for me personally, um, Tomino from Gundam, the the creator of Molesu yes. Gundam. I I got to attend one of his panels. I asked one of the nerdiest questions I've probably ever asked, and his answer was like the best it was it was the most like relatable uh writer response i could have hoped for from it and i was i was overjoyed that was one of those few like really like big old fandom moments because that was my second convention that i had ever been to um and also getting to meet a a couple of my favorite japanese artists whether they were you know at at, uh convention events or you know concerts Uh, a lot of that falls into that but mostly uh, i've gotten to meet them at at conventions and that's so Yoko cool. Taro. Oh Lord, yeah, that's right. <laughs> you did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have to give you guys props if you were able to ask questions because when I see people I really admire, I get all, I turn into a blithering idiot. And so if that's you too, don't worry about it. They're there at the convention. You can go listen to them speak at a panel. You don't have to actually walk up to them and be like, edit, 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 like I do. You don't have to. No pressure. That's the yeah. good thing about conventions is that you can meet them if you want, but you you can just watch them from a distance and still be starstruck, but be fine. Yeah. So you, you have a lot of flexibility there. Uh, and the reason why I, I use this as kind of the transition is because, well, we're talking about professionals and for, for those of you who have been, you know, either going to conventions for a bit or, you know, really starting to find yourself wondering, well, uh, you know, I'd love to, to get involved in the anime industry or, oh, I think, uh, you know, this this uh, cosplay thing is cool. I'd like to take it to, to another level or I, I want to get into streaming, things like that. Um, anime conventions are a surprisingly good way to do that. And you can meet some very interesting people in that sphere as well. Which is why we are going to give you the Anime Pro Tags Guide to Being a Pro Tag, uh, aka the advice section. Uh, So I'm going to turn this one back over to Joel uh, as one of our resident professionals. Oh dear, now I have something to live up to. (laughs) (laughs) So let's let's kick this off. Uh, What's what's one of the first things uh, you're going to want to keep in mind uh, as you start to look for these ways to transition from uh, you know, your average attendee into someone who may want to go pro or uh, work with the anime community to find that end goal? Well, I suppose from from the start, don't go to a convention thinking of it like a networking conference, but at the same time, you can go to a convention and be open-minded to ways that you can, uh, you know, mix business and pleasure, as it were. And it, uh, I think it really all just starts with finding your passion that knowing what you want to do or if nothing else using your time at a convention to see different things try new things and maybe hone in on what your passion is if you don't really have a clear vision of it yet uh any thoughts from the the rest of y'all because i i'd say that that pretty much nails it (laughs) i think the most important thing is to just be you and be super genuine gravitate towards what interests you and forget about everything else and you'll find that pieces start to fall into place you meet like-minded people um or someone says something and all of a sudden an opportunity falls into your lap that you were never thinking of uh and if you were thinking of it it wouldn't fall into your lap so just have fun first and foremost yeah yeah and uh to that point um you know getting getting to meet people that is or meet like-minded people and seeing where that goes uh, that's something that I know I've had a, a lot of personal experience with. Um, to use one example, going back to cosplay, uh, I've met a lot of really awesome, not just friends who are you know bonded for life at this point, uh, but people who I collaborate with on a lot of projects, including a lot of the, the back catalog of stuff we do at Digital Era Entertainment. Uh, a lot of our current staff, these are people who uh, I met in, in a lot of these situations that we just described, you know, waiting waiting in a line, doing cosplay together, uh, finding finding out, oh, you know this this mutual friend of ours, let's let's hang out, like let's talk, let's be cool. Um, one specific example that I, I want to give um, is a, one of the things that kind of led some of us uh, to uh, a lot of our own professional aspirations, uh, whether directly or not. 
So in my competitive uh, years uh, as a competitive cosplayer, one of the things that uh, I attempted twice was the World Cosplay Summit. Uh, I Myself and my cosplay partner, uh, Jin, uh, who I hope is watching. Hey there, Jin. <laughs> Miss you. I haven't seen you in uh, quite some time, but hope the, uh, the best coast is treating you well, as always. Um, she and I uh, partnered up, and uh, having done a lot of competitive skits uh, prior to that point, uh, we we tried uh, we tried our best, but it was in that first attempt that something interesting happened. So, because of a cosplay friend mentioning, "Hey, uh, I know this site that shows videos of these skits before they make it to YouTube," because this was back in two thousand seven when their uh, when the YouTube platform was still in its initial growth state. Um, so my own cosplay friend and teammate told me about a little thing called acparadise.com. <laughs> uh, and because of that, uh, the very next day when we went back to the con after I had watched the video, like before it could even make it to, to YouTube, I was like, I need to meet the person who, who filmed this and like shake their hand because they got this like perfect angle on one of the shots there. That would turn out to be uh, one of the one of the folks who runs AC Paradise, Henry, <laughs> our beloved uh, pink-shirted friend, uh, who you've probably seen at a lot of events if you're here in the United States uh, and see a lot of the the promo events that uh, a lot of us have participated in. That was how I first uh, got introduced to them, and later started doing these kinds of promotional events for companies like Funimation. Uh, Bandai America back when there was a Bandai America before it morphed into Bandai Namco that we all know and love today. Uh, Crunchyroll. Uh, all these companies all happened because of this one friend of mine who I just happened to be cosplaying with and decided, hey, let's partner up and do this competition. So you never know who you're going to meet and where those connections are going to take you, whether directly or indirectly. So yeah, definitely don't make that like your, your first objective, but always be open to that possibility. And this is one very specific one uh, that transitioned from very casual uh, acquaintances into something more pro. Um, do you guys have any stories you want to share in this similar vein uh, yep. before anything else? Go for it. Yeah, so similar. It was also a first meeting Henry story. <laughs> oh um, boy, another first meeting Henry story. Was... <laughs> oh, Henry, I, yeah. I, I hope you're in the chat watching this. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, well, Henry. It was like anime next one year. And uh, on cosplay.com, I had been chatting with a friend of mine. Oh, well, I hadn't met her at that time called you. Uh, because I saw, you know, on cosplay.com, they would have like where the people were from. And she was originally from Taiwan. And I was like, oh, my God, another Taiwanese person. Um, so we were like, yeah, let's just meet up at anime next. And so like I meet up with her for the first time. And henry and pika are with her and she's like yeah this is henry henry this is your other girl for kanagi and i was like what mm. so next thing i knew a few months later i was doing an acp event at otakon for kanagi nice well, <laughs> you got volunteered so, yeah so it's like it, it's something that came completely out of left field and it's just because you know i want i was meeting a meeting somebody you know just a friend that i just wanted to make i guess that yeah so yeah. things just happen yeah and i'm actually going to build off of this because um so we, we had a, a lot of overlap, uh, you and I, Emmy, uh, with our friend circles and then, you know, getting uh, brought in to do promotions for uh, AC Paradise. So going back to the idea of, you know, not being afraid to try things at, at conventions, especially when you have uh, all these different events uh, that we haven't even really touched on, like game shows uh, or, or other, you know, more competitive things. We're just talking, we've been talking strictly, you know, general Q&As or fan meetups or what have you. Uh, so one example that goes into more uh, professional territory for me, and also, oddly enough, somehow comes back to one of the things that we're doing here at Virtual Crunchyroll Expo this weekend. Uh, so uh, Emmy uh, is, has a mutual friend of ours, who I'm certain a lot of you are uh, very familiar with, uh, voice actor Christina V. <laughs> wonderful talent, wonderful person. Uh, so uh, I met Christina for the first time doing... Uh, a competition at Anime Expo. 
that same competition, by the way, was being hosted by Christina uh, and one Johnny Young Bosch. Keep that in the back of your mind, everybody who is tuning in for Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. <laughs> so uh, I, I ended up uh, talking to Christina during the, the competition. You know, we broke the ice because of our mutual friendship with Emmy. Again, didn't realize uh, yeah, that we had had mutual friendships until probably like right before I went out to, to AX that year. Right, Emmy? It was something, something like that. It was like, oh, you're going here, you know, send along a Not message. So long ago, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Um, <laughs> so by doing this competition, besides all the other uh, professional things that came my way from all the people I met, just even doing that, um, I met one of my favorite uh, collaborators on YouTube projects, YouTube producer D. Pity. Working with D. Pity, uh, I ended up working remotely with my co-host for Hime's Cosplay Cup, Vampy Bit Me, because uh, we worked on a video with D. Pity. Uh, just she was doing the the actual video part. I was providing the the vocals for the piece, uh, and here we are, just kind of coming all the way back and you know vampy and i are once again working together but you can tie back everything to um to this initial uh point of contact from having mutual friends and also going out to do events so again you can never tell like where where the road is really going to leave you um so that's that's just kind of my my more you know professional grade hey this is how my my friends kind of led me to this point uh, kind of story. There's a lot more that I'd like to dig into, but I do want to move along. Uh, so before we do, Joel, do you have any uh, equally uh, relevant stories of, you know, friends that led to bigger things or, you know, pro pro meetings that just kind of happened organically because, hey, you happen to be doing this thing at a con? Well, the easy one is you and me, Mario, that we met at the first convention I worked, but then the other low hanging fruit is the four of us here right now. Uh, if there, if we hadn't uh, met each other at cons, this podcast wouldn't be happening. I mean, yeah, <laughs> very, very, very straightforward, very valid. And again, you know, you're, you're seeing these different ways that, uh, you know, going going out there and just uh, interacting with others is it's just so uh, important to the convention experience, whether it is IRL or online. Uh, so let's actually move along because there's another uh, interesting little thing we have here about another type of person we're, we're probably going to want to meet. And we certainly have these in our lives. Um, and it, these, these events, especially from the pro side, are a very, very good way to find these. And these are mentors. Uh, finding your All Might, your Tsunade, your Izumi Curtis... Uh, besides the fact that, you know, we probably have some favorite mentor characters that we want to bring up, uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, meeting some mentors. I, I know Joel, certainly you have, you have met some mentors, uh, you know, doing, doing this for as long as we have. Um, but if the rest of y'all have, you know, mentor type people that came into your life because of this, feel free to share. I know I've definitely got a few. Oh, I see Franji, uh, over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what you got, Franji? <laughs> I don't know if Lindsay will be watching this, but um, for a long time, she was the masquerade coordinator at Anime Boston. And recently, I believe she became, I want to say now she's like the all the cosplay games coordinator or something like that. I'm not getting the title right. But um, <laughs> because of doing masquerade stuff, I met her. And now we talk about fiction writing together all the time because I actually joined the writers group that she is part of. Um, and it's just been that's been a wild ride uh, so she's been working on a novel actually she has a novel that she released um uh yeah anyway anyway lots of wonderful opportunities have just come opportunities that don't even have anything to do with anime um and so she's now the person that i whine to about how difficult uh fiction writing is uh and i that never would have happened if it weren't for being a cosplay nerd rock and roll uh emmy do we have uh, anybody who fits that category for you no. Emmy's the senpai. <laughs> no. Emmy is. Sen yeah. Congratulations, yeah. Emmy. You are now senpai. <laughs> Kawaii senpai. <laughs> um, all right. I'll, I'll just uh, volunteer uh, one of them. Uh, so, someone who I 
literally refer to as uh, my my voiceover sensei um, is is the wonderful Kyle Abair. Um, he pointed me in the direction of uh, a lot of the well, in in the direction of one of the studios that uh, I've done a lot of my training and my work through. He even you know gave me uh, a, a great uh, one on one session uh, back before even directing me towards that studio, and. He's he's been a very uh, you know important mentor in that element of my professional life. Uh, I never would have been able to meet him had it not been for not only going to events uh, but also you know uh, hanging out because of mutual friends of ours who I didn't even realize were mutual friends. It was just kind of a thing. It's like oh that's awesome, and that opened up that opportunity to really uh, strengthen. Uh, my my voiceover background. So that's that's just one very specific example. And uh, Kyle, hope you're watching, buddy. <laughs> hope you're also taking good care of my microwave. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> uh, Joel, you what about you? Time for it now, but you're gonna have to tell that story on another podcast. Yeah. Um, it, for me, for mentors, it's just um, it's really been the people who have, like All Might said, you too can do this. That uh, the person who is uh, willing to trust you to sort of uh, have that first opportunity. And uh, I think that's so important regardless of what your professional aspirations are, regardless of if it has anything to do with convention, just in general, just in life, even if it's just something personal, if it's a hobby, that finding someone who uh, can just act as a mentor figure is just so invaluable. And uh, I, I think it's that you see it all the time with shonen protagonists they always have like you said their all might their izumi curtis uh, uh their jirai their sonate uh and it, it's not without reason so uh it might take some time to find yours but i think it's something that uh it's always going to be in your best interest to have somebody who can make it so you don't need to reinvent the wheel for yourself yeah and and even though we we have you know mentioned uh you know certain uh, certain types of people it doesn't have to be you know like the big the big famous guest at a convention it can be you know just that that senpai you know that person who's been doing conventions uh for a little bit longer than you or who happens to be like in a similar industry that you've met uh sitting next to each other in the middle of a panel for one of these people like these these people are still very valuable mentors and a lot of them you know have have started with very similar uh origins to you know many of us you know, just people who decided, hey, I love this thing. I'm going to this thing. Oh, I met a person at this thing. And now I'm doing this thing professionally. So yes. things things to keep in mind and, you know, never never to, to devalue uh, anybody who is essentially like at your level because they can still provide so much uh, good mentorship to you. So always, always keep an open mind about that. Uh, yeah, sort of an aside, actually. Yes. Um, one other thing that uh is a big trope with, with uh, shonen protagonists is that uh they aren't shy about their aspirations that i want to be hokage i want to be king of the pirates uh just i want to be the number one hero that uh if you have a goal in mind be proud about it and uh, even if it's something that's really ambitious uh just letting other people know what you want to do is a good way to center yourself but also it keeps you in other people's minds when different opportunities arise and just uh, being proud about what you want to do in general, I think it's just, uh, it's a healthy thing. And it's something that uh, can open doors that you wouldn't expect because you never know when somebody else might be thinking of you. Yeah. Uh, and, and to be honest, uh, the entire team that we have here at Digital Era Entertainment definitely uh, fits that category. Uh, everybody who works with us, uh, whether it is on our written content our live streamed content, or even in our, our legacy uh, projects, which were more narrative based, uh, everybody who was there, these were people who I knew had interests in certain things and wanted to do something fun and creative, uh, or who had an interest in a particular topic and wanted to really share that with the world. I wouldn't have known any of that if they had never shared that with me, you know, just uh, in, in our regular day to day interactions. So, to, to really bolster Joel, Joel's point, you know, be be proud of what you what you are and what you want to do, because uh, it can really open up cool opportunities, like the one I'm uh, able to have right now with uh, you know three of my favorite people in the world. So, it's it, it, again, it all comes together. <laughs> 
So you mentioned uh, shonen pro tags, Joel, uh, and there there is definitely a, a good way and a bad way to approach. I want to kind of skim through this uh, so that we can uh, start to, to wrap things up a little bit because we have one more very important point to get through. So the the good way to shonen pro tag and the bad way to shonen pro tag. Joel, go. <laughs> uh, always be looking to help, never be looking to hurt. Uh, industries, whether it be anime or something else, are always going to be smaller than you think. People talk. People talk about good and people talk about bad. Uh, the sort of one-liner here we have is don't be a Bakugo. That, uh, he's very talented. He uh, got first place in uh, uh, the tournament arc. And on the podium, well, he was literally in shackles and screaming, and that doesn't reflect well on him. And Be a it, nice boy like Shoto. <laughs> Exactly. That just Shoto is good uh, boy. <laughs> lift all ships is a phrase I use a lot. That always be looking to help other people, and I uh, just uh, when, when you help others, you do indeed help yourself. And uh, just always be mindful of, of what you're doing because sometimes you can accidentally hurt people, and uh, uh, even if it's not your intention, you should definitely be mindful of how you're uh, conducting yourself. Um, and just in that same vein. A good shonen pro tag always turns their rivals into allies. It, it, if you see somebody that the protagonist is fighting within like the first five to ten episodes, odds are they're going to become one of their best friends probably in the next 22 minutes. <laughs> I mean, it, where's it, the lie? <laughs> uh, so I, I want to focus on something you said there because it brings us to one of our last uh, overall takeaways that we want to, to leave with all of you who have decided to join us today. Um you talked about, cheesy as this sounds, the power of friendship. And it is very important because you are not always going to be the winner. Uh, a lot of shonen uh, pro tags have to deal with failure. They have to deal with defeat. Uh, and even in uh, Comic Party, you know, a, a simple story about uh, a fledgling uh, doujinshi artist, uh, it, it gets into a really, really, really sad uh, couple of episodes when he experiences his first failure. He just does not want to, to even art anymore. That's, that's how badly the experience rattles him. But he is helped back up uh, because his friends rally around him and re-inspire uh, his, his love of art. Uh, Otaku no Video which is uh, the, the tail end of the Otaku Triumvirate. By the way, uh, Genshiken is the middle slot there, just in case y'all are curious. Uh, Otaku no Video, part of the appeal of the anime side of this wonderful Gainax work is a character coming back from having reached a, a really big high with his garage kit business to literally working uh, the, the, the graveyard shift uh, at his own company to only find a new outlet and restart with one of his friends who uh, he he basically was able to, to get uh, restarted with. This has also definitely happened in my own life as well. And I, I figure to kind of, you know, bring, bring this anime example to life. Uh, I mentioned uh, World Cosplay Summit. Neither of those was a successful attempt. It was runner up each time. Uh, and one of the biggest projects that Digital Era Entertainment was ever going to take on, a, a first-class Broadway musical based off of Code Geass, uh, which, by the way, we do have information about over on our website. Uh, there is a theatrical production section, uh, which also features uh, a live stream that I actually did to kind of show off the concept uh, on our Twitch channel uh, about a year ago this month. So <laughs> feel free to check that out if you want more. But e even that was such a colossal setback, uh, not just uh, personally, but professionally and financially. But it was because of friends and the power of friendship that I was able to get lifted back up. In the case of World Cosplay Summit, I would later find out uh, when I actually got to go and be there with the 2013 Team USA, helping them out with uh, the, the karaoke portion that was introduced that year, that I had actually inspired uh, one of Australia's uh, most loved uh, cosplayers, uh, Ali Cheska, who I hope Ali is watching. Uh, we had actually just flailed about this privately when she was sharing some WCS stuff the other day. Um, so hi, I'm totally embarrassing you here on Virtual Crunchyroll Expo, but uh, this this was an example of, of seeing something successful. And she, 
she inspired me in return, especially during uh, the, the latter parts of that Broadway musical attempt, uh, knowing that there was someone who had been inspired by this property, by the work that, that I had actually done, lifted me back up. And when it all came crashing down, it was because of uh, our editor-in-chief of our basically brand new informative content branch, which is how Franji got involved, which is what this whole podcast is technically a subset of, uh, Ken Cardez coming to me in the months after saying, hey, I want to do this kind of stuff. Would you be interested? And with the help of a friend, building everything back up so that we are now able to say we have two podcasts a week. We have live streams on our Twitch channel anywhere from five to a full seven days a week. We have YouTube content going up at least once a month. We have even more exciting plans uh, for, for projects that are still in the works uh, behind the scenes. And we are able to say that we are here at Virtual Crunchyroll Expo presenting a digital era entertainment production because a friend came in at a very low moment and said, hey, let's give this a try. And now we're back, we're stronger than ever, and we are having, uh, we're having this opportunity to spend time together and to share our experiences and our knowledge with all of you. Um, so don't be afraid of defeat. Don't be afraid of a setback because sometimes that can lead you on a brand new journey or get you even closer to your goals in ways that you probably just didn't see coming in a very anime type of fashion <laughs> so my heart is so warm right now so with with that in mind uh normally when we wrap up we have our weekly shill times as we call them um but because this is a, a slightly different scenario, uh, we're just gonna give you guys some you know, general uh, broad strokes of where you can find us, what we're gonna be doing. Uh, so I'm gonna kick it over to Emmy. So Emmy, uh, what's some of the stuff that we can expect from you outside of the realm of digital era entertainment productions? I mean, I'm pretty active over on my Twitter um, and that's where I usually post stuff about like cosplay and also music and voiceover. Um, I also have a Twitch, which is the same as my Twitter, and I will occasionally do piano streams on there. So if you like piano music and are bored, you can always tune in. I usually mention on my Twitter when I'm going to be streaming because it can be completely random. It's usually video game and anime music, so yeah. Rock and roll. Yep. And uh, Joel, uh, where, where, where can we find you uh, in addition to the con circuit once we are able to get back out there? Uh, well, apart from on Twitter, uh, you can find me a lot with Digital Air Entertainment. Uh, one project that I'm very excited for us to be doing uh, in the upcoming weeks is another radio drama. We've been doing uh, nerdy radio dramas for several months now since uh, uh, things went virtual, as it were. And next one up on the docket is a radio drama presentation of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, which will be on Saturday, September 19th. So. Uh, do tune in if that's of interest to you. Yep. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, we have uh, Ace Attorney being mentioned with Crunchyroll stuff. Uh, one of my favorite promotions I ever got to work on was uh, helping Crunchyroll promote the Ace Attorney anime four years ago. You so were that Phoenix was right that weekend. I remember this. Literally. <laughs> oh, that was <laughs> such a fun time. Uh, so, you know, thanks to Crunchyroll for that one as well. <laughs> like, legit. <laughs> they, 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 oh, they're the best. Uh, and Franji, uh, where, where can we find you uh, both uh, over at Digital Era Entertainment and outside? Yeah, outside of it, I mean, I mostly do commercial and uh, e-learning voiceover, so you can find me on my Twitter, even though I basically never use it. Um, but if you want to find me for nerd stuff, you, you should look to Digital Era Entertainment. Um, there's some articles I have written, um, Gundam Seed, uh, what else did I do? Blah, 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 blah. Classic Lloyd, uh, <laughs> Dome Icano. Um, interesting stuff like that. Uh, the YouTube channel, I think I do the little outro thingies, maybe the intro thingies. <laughs> Mario's like, yep, yep. yep. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, uh, the radio dramas that Joel mentioned, um, and obviously the podcast every week. Rock and roll. Uh, and, and of course, uh, you'll be seeing plenty of me all across uh, Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. Uh, I will be at Hime's Cosplay Cup alongside Vampy Bit Me. Uh, if you are watching this live, I hope you'll uh, check it out later. And if you're watching this uh, on demand, thank you. That means that I was successful in my shilling <laughs> to 
during <laughs> Hime's Cosplay Cup and you decided to come and check us out here and spend some time with us uh, over on our uh, Crunchy Virtual Crunchyroll Expo edition of our weekly podcast. Of course, you can find Digital Era Entertainment across social media. Uh, our main website, digitaleraentertainment.com, is a nice, easy hub. All that information will be on the screen, so feel free to copy that down and check us out. Uh, and that pretty much brings us to the end of this. Of course, stick around for some more wonderful content here at Virtual Crunchyroll Expo. Uh, as always, stay happy, stay healthy, and stay informed. Take care, y'all. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe, and follow us across social media for updates. Thanks for watching.